Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. Last one for the week. It's great to be together. Great to open up God's Word. Before we turn to our passage for today, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your Word, and we do ask that you would help us to understand it and to put it into practice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, picking up at verse 18 and going through to the end of the chapter. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Flee. Flee, flee, Paul says. It it reminds me of a scene from Lord of the Rings, the movies, if you've ever seen them, in the third one, in I think it's the third one anyway, in Gondor, where Lord Denethor, the steward of the citadel, he comes he comes walking out and he sees the host of Mordor before him and he cries out, Flee, flee for your lives to all of his army and all of his people. You see, Denethor looks out and he sees this great enemy host and he recognizes that it means death for them. So he tells them to flee. And what Paul is doing is exactly the same thing, but as it relates to sexual immorality. It's as though Paul looks over the wall of the city and sees sexual immorality and he cries out to the Corinthians, flee for your lives. We've been talking a lot about sexual immorality. Why should we flee from sexual immorality? Firstly, because sexual immorality, sexual sin, does damage to us in a way that no other sin does. Now, we know that in God's holy judgment, all sin is sin and all sin is bad. However, as it relates to our personhood, who we are, our whole person, there is something peculiar about sexual sin that damages us. So Paul says, every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. I think the point that Paul's trying to make here is, That, you know, when you steal something, you sin, and you will receive the judgment of that if you don't repent. Same thing with murder, the same thing with lying, and all sins. However, when we commit sexual sin, it is something about our very personhood and spirit as we get joined to another person. As we give ourselves over to the lust of our flesh, We actually damage ourselves. When we have uh, sex with someone, we become united with them. We talked about that a little bit. And so when we then proliferate that, what do we do? We join ourselves, tear ourselves, join ourselves, tear ourselves, and we do damage to ourselves over and over and over again. So firstly, because we damage ourselves, we hurt ourselves in a peculiar way with sexual sin. Secondly, Because your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So Paul says in 19, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? Now, some people have used this to justify all sorts of different rules for Christians, but Paul is primarily thinking about sexual immorality, as we saw in the previous verse. And so Paul Paul says, Guys, God has made you into something and he's filled you with the spirit of God. How can you then give that body over to sin? How can you how can you join yourself to a prostitute to go back to yesterday's devotion when the spirit of God is inside of you? But not only that, it's something a bit different than that because that's what he said in the last section. What what he's saying is every temple Every temple is made for a purpose, and the purpose of that temple is to exist for the the use 
of the deity that it was made for. So the temple for in Ephesus was there for the sake of the goddess of Ephesus. And the temple existed to do that which was right for that goddess and offer certain sacrifices and everything else. Well, the same is true for you and I. We are temples with a purpose. And we are temples with a purpose which is driven by the Spirit of God. So let us not offend the Spirit of God by giving ourselves over to sexual sin. But then lastly, he says, you are not your own. You've been bought with a price. Glorify God in your body. You see, it damages us. We've been set aside for a purpose as temples. But then we recognize, actually, we aren't our own anymore. As the great catechism says, I am not my own, but belong body and soul to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, God has paid the price for us. We no longer exist for our own purposes. We no longer exist for our own desires. We have an owner. We have a master. And his name is God. His name is Jesus Christ. Therefore, we only have one function, and that function is to glorify God. And you cannot glorify God while practicing homosexuality. You cannot glorify God while sleeping outside of marriage. You cannot glorify God while sleeping with lots of different people. The only way to glorify God is with obedience, in accordance with God's word. And so, so let us flee from sexual immorality and flee towards godliness and holiness in keeping with the temples that we've been made to be and in keeping with the one who's bought us and in keeping with God's glory. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Please bless it to us that, Father, we might live for your glory. Help us to flee from sexual immorality. And as we uh, go to your house tomorrow, may we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining me for another devotion. I'll see you back here next week. I hope you have a blessed Lord's Day, and I'll see you then.